What's going on YouTube? It's Marvin and I'm back again. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. I hope you had an awesome new year and I hope you've got the motivation for 2021. If you haven't, don't worry about it. Today I am here to tell you, get the loot deck, get it. If you're on the fence, jump over. If you're on the other side of the fence and you don't want to ju jump over, it doesn't matter get the loot deck it makes a hell of a difference if you've seen an ad and you don't really know what it's about watch this video i guarantee you i will make you think twice and i'll make you jump over that fence by the time you're done so a little bit of backstory i saw it online and i just thought it looks good, but it's it's too expensive. Two hundred and twenty pounds was the price tag for it, and I, I thought mm, I'd love to try it, but I can't justify that money. So naturally, I looked for another alternative. I went with the the MIDI MIDI Pro or something like that, and that lasted all of one day. Don't get me wrong, the price tag for it was fantastic. It was forty pounds or something like that. But when I actually received it, my problem was it was just too hard to operate. To get it to work, I had to go onto developers' websites, do a lot of reading to find out how to set it up, how to get going with it. It just wasn't clear. Whereas Loop Deck, once you get one of them, you plug them in, you download the software off of their website, and, and that's it, you're off, you're going. So even though I needed something to help me with my workflow, I sent the Mini back. Um, and I just thought, listen, I will manage without it. Even if the loop deck wasn't on the market, that was too much headache for me to get right. So no disrespect to the, the MIDI users, of course, if you're comfortable using it, awesome. You saved yourself almost 200 pounds. However, if you like the peace of mind, then loop deck all the way. So this high price tag, as I mentioned, um, it wasn't it wasn't something that I was really interested in paying. Fortunately enough, I was I was good in 2020, and I got that as a gift. I got that as a Christmas gift. I put that on my Christmas list, and Santa delivered. You know, Santa delivered. Uh, so I was lucky. So when I looked on YouTube for information on the Loop Deck Live, I didn't find much, especially from the creative region. Everyone else was using it for streaming or talking about it for streaming purposes. Which, if that is what you're looking for, I do not have a clue of how to how to do that so i apologize but if you are one of those people still keep watching because you never know this might prove to be useful for you later on so let's talk about the pros let's talk about why i am happy the build quality i didn't think i'd be talking about build quality i would i thought that i would be talking about what it does for me and my machine however I have done a little bit of moving around and had it in my bag multiple times. And I wasn't fearful in the slightest. I wasn't fearful that anything would break. It seems, as I mentioned, pretty sturdy. Something that I found really, really strange when I first plugged it in, um, which I'll throw in there as a pro. You've got a button here, right? So this is fully customizable and it's got like a desktop logo with a plus on it. And when you press it, it gives you a whole different desktop. I, I know that this is possible. I know Windows users uh, will probably turn around and say, look at this noob, but it really is different. It really is unique. And then you can cycle from different windows. So if you were showing someone something, i.e. streaming, and you just wanted them to see your desktop, you didn't want to see the apps that were open. It's nice to know that you can give them the option of seeing one screen. I thought that was that was awesome. I don't know what that's called, but it's, it's great. Um, as you can imagine what a loop deck would do, you can change your brightness of your screen just with twisting the knobs or the dials. I'm gonna call them dials today, not knobs. You can turn up and down your volume, you can open up Spotify, you can open up your different programs, you can save um, whatever programs you want onto your, oh snap, I'm pressing stuff now. You can save whatever programs you want onto your interface and you can put your own logos on there. So you can take a photo of yourself and put it onto the digital screen. I think that is, that's hilarious to me. The emojis as well, you've got like a little emoji button. So I press that and then you can just type in your emojis and they come up. So it's, yeah, I'm used to being on the computer and never being able to use my emojis. I know there's a small shortcut for it, but listen guys, like I said, I'm really, really happy about this product. And if you are someone who struggles or 
didn't even think of some of these things, then I guarantee you're going to love it too. So let's talk about stuff that is actually important, like really important for your workflow. Just opening up OBS. Five minutes later. I am going to use an example of this photo quickly. I've customized my layout, as you can see here, to how I, how I like it, how I operate. I'm going to just press on virtual copy here uh, just to create a secondary. Um, and I can move from photo to photo with the dials here. Um, as and when I please. So why I love this thing, I can go through my normal selection process. How I organize my photos is by putting them into five and one stars. I just one and five star them. I can do that in my camera as well. If I do it in the camera and I know that I've got five star, for example, as soon as they hit Lightroom, they're already five stars, five starred. I'll know which ones that I want um, and I'll just continue my my selection process from there after i've got my five stars i generally go through them again and use the color coding so reds are out of there if i usually just press the delete button which is right there anyway the greens are all good for me and then the blues are the final 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 selects i can zoom all the way in just with with the dial um, and go through all the different steps which is great and then my bottom row just there was just for uh, if I, I ever wanted to just filter them and see which ones I, I have in the final final selection. My second page literally has most or pretty much everything that Lightroom has to offer. Uh, and you'll see when I actually press each um, button, it changes the dials. So I can from here change the contrast immediately on the photo as you'll see. And then if I don't like it, then I can just click it back in. But the, the beauty is, is that with each movement of that dial, you can see the minute changes at such speed. So this is why I love this thing. This is why this thing is the shit and you need to buy it. Because if you're using a mouse slider, don't get me wrong, I've got friends who are creatives also, and they've also said to me, look, I can do it quickly. And they've got their mouse sensitivity high and all that stuff. It's not the same. When you get to the finer edits, I think I personally haven't found space to use it on Photoshop because a lot of the reasons why I use Photoshop is frequency separation, stuff that you'd need a brush for and you need to move around. It's not so much about moving dials and changing colors or in Premiere's case, cutting up clips. So I think that's where personally it works phenomenally for me. So I'll give this a quick, very, very quick edit to how I like it. So I add in some exposure. I usually drop my blacks just to create some contrast and I can literally see what I'm doing. Wherever I move, um, it, it pulls down the list and tells me what I'm doing. We had some snow, so I'm gonna up the whites just a tiny bit, just a touch. Same with my highlights. And I'll probably raise my shadows just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of a washed out look. Just add a little bit more contrast just so that my partner M is separate from the background. And then from there, I'll go into my different controls. So I'll go into simple edit and I might want to cool it down. I might want to warm it up. If I've gone too far, I press the middle button and I'm right back in. But to me, that warmer tone looked a lot better. For smoothing skin, I would always recommend if you don't have the time to go through frequency separation in Photoshop, <laughs> the quick, easy plug to that. Now, I personally like to drop my clarity and then raise my texture ever so slightly. And that gives a nice soft bloom filter type look to the photo. What I don't like is when people overdo it. They, they, they basically change in the same things. They go to the curve, the, the, the sliders. Personally, for me, I'm just like, okay, if it's a masterpiece and you really wanna take your time, then yeah, go for it. But sometimes I think people overdo it in their mind have a look that you're going for and be acquainted with the tools to help you get there. That is exactly why this thing will help you out because after you understand what the tools do, you wanna get there as quick as you can. You don't wanna kerfuffle. So this helps so much. And then just up the vibrance a little bit. I don't need to dehaze. I don't need to go clinically strong into this image because for me, it wasn't like an image that I really, really need to pay attention to. Another thing, I don't know if you guys suffer from this, but I most certainly do. If I use my spot removal tool too much, um, the lag that follows with it after color grading 
Sometimes I even have to create virtual copies, do my spot removal and stuff like that on one copy and then color grade the other one just so that it doesn't lag and then swap over the spot removal and stuff like that onto the, the color graded image. This, you don't get that lag. You can feel every minute change. But when you use a mouse on, on some of the sliders, it doesn't change until you've put it to that point. Um, whereas with the loop deck, as you twist, you see your results, you know how far you've gone. And it's just, like I said, I'll keep preaching it, peace of mind. So I've set my bottom four tabs. I've got it written down as color management, RO, YG, AB, and PM. Red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purples, and magentas. I'm probably not even gonna change much. Maybe the, maybe the blues for the sake of it, for the sake of this video. Let's see what we get with the blues. And it's literally just the jeans that are being picked up. Maybe the saturation on the aquas. No, there's, there's not much. Um, let's see if greens are picked up with the grass over there. A little bit, a little bit. I'll probably drop the saturation just so that M stands out. You definitely want to, when I do some more videos, I will always elaborate. You definitely want to make your subject the sharpest and the most bright part of the image. It's, it's never always going to go that way, but I guarantee you it will catch the eye of your viewer if you have a sharp and bright subject. So yeah, it really takes away from using the, the keyboard so much and it just gives you a really hands-on feel. So what I don't like when it comes to cropping or resizing your image, things just aren't easy. For example, I, I know the shortcut to cropping, which is pressing the R uh, button on your key, keypad and you'll see that the loop deck goes completely blank. Now I've tried to set things up and put in my own custom settings to, to try and get it to operate. But it just seems, please correct me, if you've got a loop deck, please let me know how you do it, because I'd love to know. Um, but it just doesn't allow you to do anything from that point. Now I understand uh, the loop deck plus, the one that was made for Lightroom has that option, but I didn't want a plus. A plus is like the same size as my laptop. I, I, I don't want that. So it would be great um, if they could add it into the live. I'm sure it's only a case of software and updates. Um, but like I said, if I'm missing a trick, please let me know down in the comments. It'd help me out loads. And the same with any of the other sliders and the same with my adjustment brush, the same with my radial filter, the same with my graduated filter, spot removal, I never use red eye. Everything else is, is great when it comes to, to this program, to the loop deck using the program. But the only other issue that I had is my sharpening. I like to use the sharpening tool personally. Um, I generally don't really touch my radius and detail in and around the 80 to 110 region. I don't know whether this is a tip for you guys. I don't know if you just sharpen the whole image as, as this would do, but your masking controls where you sharpen. So I hold on to Alt and then I move my masking slider as you can see and it will show you what is being sharpened in your image. So the more you move it over to the right, the less is being sharpened, the more it's finding the predominant lines to sharpen or contrasts to play against, if that makes any sense. So my problem is with the loop deck is, let's say I go back to sharpening, which is just here, um, and I go to my mask, I can move the slider. There's nothing wrong with me moving the slider. The problem is, and I won't go into it now because I've tried for hours on end. The problem is, is I can't get it to hold the alt control whilst moving that slider. I did it and it started opening and closing the program and it was going nuts. Once again, if anyone knows a fix, please let me know because I would love to be able to move that slider whilst it's showing me what I need to see. Other than uh, being able to rotate your images, I would never expect you to really be able to put on a radial filter and brush in and stuff like that. I would prefer to just do that with a mouse. After you go through this initial stage of editing and you do move all your sliders around, then if you really want to get hands on, that's the time to do it. Nothing's going to replace that. But the initial stages, yo, I'm telling you, as I mentioned, as you can see on this screen, you haven't seen all the images. I've done street photography. And yesterday, it only took me a couple of hours to go through 160 photos 
from scratch. Just moving the dials, finding out what I like. Yes, okay, once you find a scene that you've used, you're probably gonna use the similar settings. So all you do is you come over here, you press copy, and then you go to the next photo, you select the next few photos and you press A, and it just pastes them all. So, so I didn't do every photo from scratch, but there were at least, what, 15 plus different places and scenes that I was in that I used different settings for. So starting from scratch, it gets you there. It gets you there quick. So yeah, moving on to Premiere. As you open it, you know, it, it changes all the settings again. Okay, you got your clips in here. Uh, and I've kept mine really, really simple. For the initial stages, all the cutting up, that is that is my predominant use. Like I sit here like a controller. I sit with it and I just move the dials and it, it does everything. So zooming in, so if I want to get really close, which was a nightmare. If I was trying to do that with my mouse, I'd have to keep pulling out and then you go close and then, oh no, I need to be tighter. And then you gotta go back down and you go back, it's a nightmare. Having this dial to zoom in and out, oh, beautiful. It's beautiful. Can you, can you see my face right now? It's beautiful, it saves so much time. So then you've got your jog dial here, which the quicker you turn it, the, the more it pushes past or, or, or moves down the clip. The only thing that I would say bad about this jog situation is, as you're jogging, you can't hear the audio which when you're, and once again, if anyone knows a fix for this, please let me know. But if you're um, scrubbing through with the mouse, then a lot of the times you can still hear the audio, which is a benefit to doing that. So once you've um, kind of found that, that place that you want um, to cut your clip at, I've set mine to be able to just press that button and it cuts it. And then my ripple delete button is right here. So it's just gonna cut that middle bit out and I'm just moving. So I'm chopping up files and just getting them done. If you make mistakes, you've got your undo and you've got your redos right here at a touch of a button, which is beautiful. You've got your saves, because I know a lot of people, or well, they used to, I don't think it happens as much, but I know a lot of people's premiere crashes at times and you end up losing all your stuff. I've done it a wedding video that I almost lost after doing a week's worth of work. Lucky I had backup save files and I only went back about an hour or so. so if you don't want to keep scrubbing, you can just jump um, from clip to clip, which is which is useful. Okay, for some reason it's not added in the audio fade, um, but I'm not really fussed on that. I know that I can just set up a custom button for that and just do Control Shift D. Speed duration, once again, that is also B on the keyboard as well. So it's nice to just have two so that you can just bounce back and forth, whatever your brain goes to first, which is great. But I might need to add in set frame to size. Because when I want to add in photos to my video, yo, that that's perfect. Because then I don't have to resize the image to make sure it fits well and all that stuff. I just say fit size and it just sits there on the page. And then if I then want to move things around and, and organize, I've got my clip selected um, and then I can just move it with the dial nice and easy. And each click tells me how far I'm going. If I want to move up and down, it's really responsive. Don't get me wrong, it's okay at times using the mouse, but sometimes if you want to move something, perfect line, just having those dials just works. And then if you go wrong, you just click and you're back to square one. I know there is a reset button on that too, but trust me it's beautiful and you've got scale which is right here as well so you can increase for me in premiere that's pretty much it if i'm honest i tend to not really use the other tools maybe that's just me uh, maybe i'm not quite there yet maybe i'm not that great of, a, 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 of an editor yet but you can uh, to, to tell a lie i have used the basic creating tools uh, like exposure, black shadows, whites and highlights. But generally speaking, I shoot in S-Log. Uh, I've got a lot for it. Or oh, sorry, I try and correct it as much. No, tell a lie. No, I do do the cheating way or the lazy way. I don't correct my footage. I set my white balance as as, as often as I can. Um, I whack on, I shoot in S-Log, I whack on the lot, and then I correct to the theme that I'm going for or the style that I'm going for. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lazy in some people's eyes, but 
works for me, I guess, for the time being. Once you get to that point, everything is quite fine-tuned anyway. So yeah, that is um, that is it. Oh, in relation to Premiere, I wouldn't necessarily say there are any negatives. So yeah, that's my new workflow. That's what speeds me up. If you don't believe it, trust me. Get your hands on one. Find a way. Use it. Ask someone, can I use it for a, an edit or a day or whatever it may be? My friends, don't ask me because I won't give it to you. <laughs> Just, just buy it, trust me, just buy it. You won't regret it. Or just put it on your Christmas list like I did. If you are one of the people who have been weighing it up and not quite sure on what you are gonna go for, um, I hope that I've helped your buying decision. I hope that I've eased your mind in relation to thinking. I hope that I've answered any unknown questions that were on the table. So with that said, um, hopefully this video has not been too long. But that is my personal review after having it for just over two weeks. And yeah, I, I love it. I, I love it. I'm not editing without it. It's small. It fits in my bag. Um, if my laptop is going, there's no reason why the loot deck can't go. Ah, there is one more con. It's bloody wired. It'd be great if they could come out with, I'm not going to say a new one because I've just bought this one receive a transmitter situation maybe where you plug it into the top of the loop deck and you get that that transmission i would say that's something that they need to or i would like to see added on but yeah please drop a like onto this channel it helps me make more videos like this and i want to make more videos like this i want to try out more gear um, and find more shortcuts so that we can spend more time being more creative and doing less editing or at least making editing fun. Like I'm not ever thinking, oh, that was a great shoot, but I've got to go home and edit one of that. Like that doesn't come into my mind anymore. It's it's a lot quicker. So please drop me a sub as well. Um, I, I love to see my subscribers going up as anyone would and drop a comment so that you can get the best out of this channel too. With that said, stay safe and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.